Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's Wrestling Mayhem Show 485. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters here in the studio in Pittsburgh, PA. Mayhem Studios, ready to talk wrestling, and we got so much to talk about. With me, first of all, from uh, from wherever the heck he is this week, it is Boom! Papa Lunchbox, panelriot.com, at DJ Lunchbox on the Twitters. Hello friends, DJ Lunchbox here coming to you live from my deep diving submersible. I'm currently somewhere over the Mariana Trench uh, because that is where the best undersurfing is to be had as well as the elusive dark cod. Uh, they will both be mine, but uh, not until we do a show. Hey guys, it's Bates. That's a, that's a show. Hello. You're interrupted by your this, we'll fix this that scheduled program in post. Uh, also with us, uh, from he represents Riz Plays Games and Instacoin to Begin dot com. The Riz, I, I do Sorg. Um, thanks for having me, Sorg. And yeah, I go to Riz Plays Games on on the YouTube's, Twitches, YouTube Gaming. Uh, Ustream, Uporn, Xtube, uh, a lot of other things Okay. that I can't get into that are probably not good to be in. What? Uh, I think there's some Russian site on there. I'm not sure. Uh, you don't yeah, know. Check what, me out on the, on the popular sites. You don't, the we're going to find out what Riz means in other languages, apparently. <laughs> Usually it's naughty. Also with us it from is. San Antonio, Texas, he is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling out of Austin, Texas. He is, uh, and we can we talked a little bit about him cocooning out of as a, bu- as a vo- <laughs> vocal butterfly on Rayham Show Gold if you're uh, one of our Patreon supporters. He is Eamon Payton. And Eamon, too, please, on the Twitters. I am happy to be here, Sorg, uh, with all the uh, depressing uh, nature of wrestling that's been happening in the last few oh. days, which I'm sure we'll get into. Oh, we it's are going to get into it. Yes. It's time for a happy way of sunshine. We need to hug it out. Guys. Hug it out. Hug it out. <laughs> um, but, and also, we got a guest in the couch. On the, in the couch? On the couch. Ugh. Uh, he's going to be joining <laughs> us for a longer interview uh, on the Indie Wrestling Show, Indie Mayhem Show. Sorry. Uh, he is James Matthew over there. He represents barjutsu.com. What the heck is a barjutsu? That is the American art of bar fighting. Yes. <laughs> hey, is this microphone supposed to be like right in my thoughts? Huh? It's it's all right. Yeah, you know, kind of kind of talk around it. If you want to lower it a little bit, that's cool too. Uh, it's kind of cool because uh, this comfy this comfy couch is just awesome. Yeah, you're just hanging out over there. I am just hanging. And out. he also brought he, he also brought we can show this off a little bit. The uh, bar jutsu. This is for real. Wait right here. The bar jutsu championship. Look at that thing. You're going to find out more about this and about the uh, ancient art of bar fighting on the Indie Mayhem show. And check out barjutsu.com as well. I, I keep screwing up and saying barjitsu. That's, and, that's how it is. It's barjitsu. It is barjitsu. <laughs> yeah, but it's spelled with a U. But with so. the U. Oh, I've been just saying like nujitsu the whole the wrong time. No, yeah, no, no that's so, it. It's that's how you say it. We're gonna figure this out on any mayhem show. So go check that out, especially <laughs> if you're live over here. I'm glad to be here. I... Thank you very much uh, for joining us and coming in studio. Uh, so uh, hey, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Check us out, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. I'm gonna gently put this belt down as I'm talking here. Uh, it looks expensive. Uh, <laughs> and crash. Uh, that is a Dave Milliken. Dave Milliken, give him a plug. Uh, but check us out, WrestlingMamShow.com. Subscribe to us. Uh, hit us up on the social medias, everything. Please comment on iTunes. It helps out greatly if you do that. And also drop us a line at uh, the email address. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMamShow.com or the hotline 412-206-WMS0. Drop us a line. Uh, hear your voice on the show through that. And uh, also, big thanks to our Patreon supporters. Big news this week. First of all, Big thanks to the wrestlingrevolution.com, who I believe is our longest supporter. Maybe I've been saying this wrong, but we also have Bo Diggity. Woo! Woo! No, 
little bit. No, but you're late on this. I think we have a little bit of delay tonight. Uh, but he also has been supporting us for a while. And they had a little tag that I noticed today when I was looking at the thing. And according to this, uh, uh, Bo Diggity has been supporting the Wrestling Mayhem show for 485 continuous days. So he wow. gets the Bo Diggity Tron with that countdown for, for, for I, I don't know, well, he is the record, so we're just going to tick one up. Maybe I'll make a graphic for next week or something. But we also have a brand new supporter this week. Thank you to Ed Burke. What? We've been talking with you for, for for months now on the Twitters and everything. Uh, thank you for joining us and, and supporting the show. I think he said something about his glasses came in a lot cheaper than he expected, so he has a couple extra bucks to contribute. And I think he nice. also contributed to Panel Ride, if I'm not mistaken, too, right? Yes, he did. He is our newest Patreon subscriber. Thank you so much. Those guys are getting some extra gold content, State of the Mayhem show, and anything else we can throw your way that's a little bit extra. And sometimes extra privileges, like like maybe, hey, you can listen to the, the, the behind-the-scenes indie talk like somebody jumped into after the show last week, you know? <laughs> you get to get a little bit more uh so that's something you can do to help the show so first of all um we got okay there's a lot happening let's start with the next let's get the <laughs> bad stuff out of the way this week i don't want to really talk about oh, the, what bad stuff what bad stuff, Which that happened. Bad stuff? sometimes oh. friends of the show were involved i don't want to get too much in the shooting mm-hmm. that happened the performance center it's 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 bad it's not really a wrestling story other than to happen there um I, 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 I don't know. How do we want to go about this? Elements there to is, it. There is wrestling elements. There is wrestling But I, I think... He was... Okay. Go ahead. Wait. Uh, from from what I read, he was obsessed with one of the female wrestlers. Yes. Uh, um, actually, there was multiple de- female wrestlers. Okay. Right. Uh, it was mean? AJ Lee and uh, Lita. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, well, which was never there. there. Let, let's t- let's talk. Uh, so, so two... But when he had been banned from a lot of, uh, a lot of shows... Before this, correct? Yeah, yeah. He actually applied four times for a job. <laughs> okay, let's and, wait, 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 wait. Let's let's break this down, Riz. Uh, what happened? For those that don't know, first of all, there's, uh, there's actually two incidents. This is the this is the worst of the two. Yeah, this um, is the worst. The first one there was. The first yeah. one, Riz, was um, um, actually a fan. Actually, uh, uh, came after uh, Dean Ambrose uh, as he was leaving the ring on SmackDown when oh, they were filming shit, it the I other day. Uh, supposedly with a knife. Uh, mm-hmm. He was tackled. It was fine. No, nobody was hurt except for probably the guy, uh, which, you know, that's what you get. Um, and then there's the Performance Center incident, which was, um, and they say it was a shooting. It came out as there was a shooting at the Performance Center. It was actually the cops shot the guy. Um, yeah. The guy was definitely not in his right mind. Uh, for whatever re- the reason he was there, he, he apparently came after the cops with a knife, charged at them with a knife. Uh, the report is... Or maybe at least... At least he said that he was armed in some way. Yeah. Okay. Or he gave the reason to believe that they he was armed. They said he was armed, came after the cops. The cops acted pretty quickly. Uh, they, The report I read said they backed up 7,500 feet and then shot the guy after backing up and pretty much giving him a chance, right? Um, so uh, last I knew he was in life-threatening. I don't know what's happened in the last 24 hours uh, in surgery and everything had not passed or, or that I was aware of. Um, and, and supposedly, now the reports I've read are both uh, he had an obsession with AJ Lee and Lita, so mm-hmm. it scares me that I have the same uh, diva crushes as this guy a little bit. Uh, um, you uh, so you don't have, <laughs> yeah, so you, don't you have, have the a diva to... crush. This yeah. guy had something else entirely. Right, right. So I mean, I think that's um, um, uh, the first subject, and the other one is not going to be a good one either. Uh, but mm. uh, but uh, one, aren't you kind of surprised that something like this doesn't happen more often? Um, we've seen every once in a while you do see like people looking the other way and you find out somebody tried running into the ring or sometimes they do get on rock cause you can't miss it or something. And the cameras right. are, are trying to avoid them and we're looking over here and then, and the wrestlers are trying not to, you know, give attention to that. Cause I think that's what they're mostly instructed to do. Right. Um, and of course to the extreme, which was the performance center issue. Um, this, this is something that happens with celebrities a lot is, is, you know, this obsession thing, especially with the girls, um, or, 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 or girls, uh, uh, grabbing onto, uh, uh, Roman Reigns, you know, isn't it shocking that they're still doing the Roman Reigns entrance down the aisle at this point? Yeah. I'm waiting for somebody to just punch him. I'm like, waiting for him then, to punch I'm, out somebody himself. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's like... Now, and as we continue to talk about this, I just realize more of these incidents are just happening. Because it wasn't too long ago we had the incident where Roman got hit in the head with that Money in the Bank briefcase. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. 
like, what is happening? Is everyone just gone like crazy? <laughs> And, like, is this just, like, a sign of the wrestling apocalypse? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like – because, I mean, you're, we didn't have incidences like this for a while. But then if you look into the further past where people still thought wrestling was real, you would have people, like, getting in bar fights eh, – tied it in – with uh, <laughs> with heels who were just there to drink. That. And they would get in actual bar fights. Right. Uh, the the most famous one turns. was – the most famous one of that was uh, – Piper getting stabbed multiple times by a fan by somebody that thought it was real. No, that you're thinking of John oh. Cena. No, really? no, 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 no. No, it was John Cena and Car- one of Carlito's guys. No. Who was that? No, the hey, that's... He's Jesus. Jesus, yeah, Jesus stabbed oh, him. Yeah, yeah. And that's how he won the yeah. U.S. title. <laughs> <laughs> he he rose above hate. Rose above <laughs> knives. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Um, uh, I I have I, I don't I don't recommend this, but I searched him on Twitter and uh, holy shit! <laughs> like, oh, he yeah. has it- he has his uh, tough enough audition on there, and I'm 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 really really hoping I don't click on that. There's also a, um, a TMZ of all places because Sorg, I know you love when TMZ reports mm-hmm. wrestling news. Um, uh, of all places, got in a lot of details on this guy, uh, including uh, a past incident at the Performance Center, which we're not going to talk about here. No, nope. because it because as we are a vulgar show, that is it was a level of vulgar that really caught me. No, off guard. it's it's not that <laughs> vulgar. I, I know what he, I know no, what he's talking about. I read it this morning. Bad. That's uh, it, it's pretty gross, but uh, funny. Uh, it's just it's just gross. I, I, can I, can I, wait, wait. Can I get a hint? Because I'm not sure if I read this. Or... He was uh, he was mixing his own concoction of uh, certain bodily fluids. That's oh. how we, that's how we get away with. Okay, it. okay, that's there. fine. That's fine. That's fine. Not the, not the grossest thing we've said on this show, at least. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I I think I think uh, I, I don't know. I don't want to demean wrestling fans when I say so, some of these comments, but but it's something that attracts. Can I say the weirdos? Yes, I mean fringe fringe elements. The fringe elements, exactly. I mean, we talk about uh, we talk about the the some of the crowds that I adore. I, I adore these crowds that get way too into the indie shows, right? They're some of my favorite crowds to go, <laughs> right? And I'm talking about, and I will not, and then I, I I talk about these outright on Indie Mayhem Show. The RWA crowd in West Newton and the uh, the crowd for IWC in Clearfield. They're there. They're into it. Wrestling is damn real. And mm-hmm. one time a lady hauled off and, and, and hit J-Rock with a steel chair. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, come on. And, and not that she really put any force behind it because she couldn't. Um, but, 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 that's you want that passion. I mean, how many times have you heard the stories of legends where they're like, yeah, they were so mad at me and it was so real and they slashed my tires and they were about to flip my limo over. That's a badge of honor for the guys from the eighties and the seventies. Right. And that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. But to the point where a guy wanted to get out of, wanted to go stab Dean Ambrose in a day and age where we know St- Dean Ambrose is a character, right? Um, I mean, what did he like look at his girlfriend funny or something? Or what? It, it, supposedly he had a knife. How did freak some did people, it? some people some know people. that Dean Ambrose is a character, right? You're right. I know. I know. And, 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 and you can say how in this day and age do you not know, but some people don't, some people aren't looking past the looking glass when it comes to pro wrestling uh for whatever reason wherever they are in life um and and it's just a thing on tv you know i do i do wonder if if it is something unique to pro wrestling at least this level of of of, let's just say craziness like like (laughs) i wonder if that just happens also in just like regular celebrity kind of oh certainly oh There, certainly. there, there are stalkers everywhere uh some actually take it to that level of obsession and wanting to do harm to people who have no reason standing in their way. And I'm using air quotes talking about them. Uh, but like, uh, I forget who it was, had a, had a, had a gun and he was looking for one of the celebrities and he was taken down before. Mm -hmm. Uh, it it was just, it, it happens in every society, right, right. like the, the, sports, the, celebrities, 
movie stars, TV stars. Right. It, it's, but but right now it's being tell it's being brought to our attention because it's so oh my god they actually have a place yeah. where we can actually focus on and say this is where they are coming now. Right. <laughs> plus, plus the world is it's such a smaller place with social media and everything like that. Mm. that you hear about this stuff right away instead of like a week later after it happens. Yeah. What was the name of the guy who wanted to kill the president for Jody Foster? Hinkley. Oh, I know. He, Hinkley. Yeah, yeah Hinkley. John Hinkley. You got that guy and you got the guy who um, – was it John Lennon? Yeah. Who was, who was killed by Mark a crazed David fan? Mark David killed yeah. Lennon, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean the difference yeah, is yeah. The, these these fictional characters are performing in front of you know thirteen thousand people on a weekly, daily ish basis, right? So there's more opportunity, I guess, for for some of these crazy fans to do again know where they are. Uh, uh, Jennifer Lawrence isn't in front of uh, fifteen thousand people on a weekly basis, you know. I mean, for the and most also, part. and I also would say like she's not playing a character necessarily as well. Right. Like people who right, are right, would say you- are are. Are obsessed with their are obsessed with her and, and are those kind of people aren't the ones that are obsessed with her like character that she plays in movies. Right. I think it's a little bit different in wrestling. And it's, it's so unique because wrestling is a fictional thing done on a stage that mimics realism, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it is so it's much presented. harder, right? It's still presented as real. How many times have we had a conversation where like us or other people? are looking at wrestlers and in their personality and daily dealings and maybe you find random in the street and they can't decipher them between their character and, and, and that person, right? Because they they try to, you know, there's just, it, the, it's such a gray area and it wasn't, it was an even more gray black and white area back when kayfabe was a thing, right? Uh, and, and, and the other side of it is, is I just lost what the other side of it was, uh, but <laughs> I had a good point that I've been holding on to for a bit here. Uh, but anyways, um, so hey, we've got to get going here. we got to get uh, one of our guys has got to leave, and he's got something to do before he leaves. So let's get uh, – first, let's let's give a shout-out to our friends at Slice on Broadway. Uh, they've been supporting us, uh, some fine Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza right up the uh, Broadway Avenue here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. I know not a lot of you are in Pittsburgh. I know a lot of you are in Pittsburgh, but they're like, I don't cross the river. You should cross the river because it's a damn fine pizza, and if you ever have your – a business trip or something or maybe we get that wrestlemania 35 here in pittsburgh make sure you stop by slice on broadway i'm sure it'll still be open because these guys ain't never going to close uh slice on broadway.com to check them out they're here like i said in the south hills in beachview uh neighborhood of pittsburgh and also down in carnegie pa down on main street on our way out to the airport and hopefully by the time wrestlemania 35 happens here we won't have all that construction you can get off at the exit uh so please go check them out let them know you heard about them on the wrestling mayhem show pgh underscore slice on the twitters and look for the slice on broadway on facebook and instagram all right topic number two guys um the legends are falling the legends are falling uh of course we know what's going on with hulk hogan still breaks my heart i almost wore a hulkamania shirt while i was uh, mowing the lawn the other day and thought better against it um don't want my neighbors to judge me more than they already do uh so that's been an issue and I want to get to the Hall of Fame thing, but first we need to mention um, a friend of the show. Hey! A friend of the show, and this came up a while ago. This has been a brewing thing, but officially, officially... What did, I, what, what did a friend of the show do? Superfly sorry? Jimmy Snuka has been charged with the murder of a woman. I believe in oh. it. This, this is the one from the 80s, right? That I've been hearing about that they were yeah. supposedly... Yeah, because I think a, so. a couple years ago, there was a story that came out that they were going, they're looking into reopening a case of her death. And supposedly going to accuse uh, Jimmy Snuka, who, of course, WWE legend has been, you know, in the last couple of years. I think 2010 was in WrestleMania. Uh, Hall of Famer, obviously. Uh, he's got a ring, right? He, he's, he has mm-hmm. to. He, he's in there. Um, and between that, between Hulk Hogan, apparently Hulk Hogan was on Good Morning America. I didn't watch the interview, but I understand he was pleading WWE. And WWE says, yeah, we're still pretty steadfast with our decision right now. He's not even on the Hall of Fame Page, for instance, mm-hmm. Sonny. Oh, <laughs> you're the groans. <laughs> if you the... don't know, speaking mm-hmm. of things that we maybe shouldn't say on a podcast, apparently you can go and have a Skype call with her, and it's very exposing. Um, uh, sword, sword. Yeah, yes, I have an email about Sonny. About uh, wait, wait, wait. 
Did, are you on the newsletter? What's going on here? Uh, so, so for those of you who don't know, Sunny is pretty much selling her services on Skype, like Sork said. Uh, and I got a letter from Sunny. What? How much did you pay for that? Zero. Okay. Uh, it, it, it pretty much went down the list. Uh, you probably already heard the rumors and dirt sheets about it. Um, let's see. 50, uh, she didn't mention uh, the 25 for just talking or $10 for just talking, uh, for 10 minutes. Uh, but she did go in the, in the detail, $50 gets 10 minutes of chat while she's in lingerie and it shows the top, uh, a hundred dollars. And this is her words for 10 minutes of chat and showing everything Winky face. Winky face. So you have a menu, basically. Yes. Yes. Uh, this is, and I prefer Skype, but it on the laptop or desktop, please. And then she goes, also, you can do anything on your end. <laughs> and I encourage you to. <laughs> which, which begs the question, what can we do on our end? No, that does oh, not no. beg that question. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, when will she? When will she stop All right. the Skype All right. call? I don't want to get into this because we're no. so short on time for the segment. But, 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 if you have an idea of what we can do on our no. end in a no. call with Sunny, <laughs> absolutely not in a call with Sunny. No, no, I just want to hear the ideas. Okay, <laughs> yeah, what is something? Idea, it's going to be terrible. What can we do <laughs> on our end? Don't go the obvious route here. Hey, hey, hey! She's encouraging us to lunchbox. Oh email us. I do not. Email I us. I do not approve of this message. Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow dot com. Hold on, let me put you that up there. That fuck Good money. times at wrestlingmayhemshow dot com. Please, absolutely, do not send us pictures. I just want no, to make that clear. No, 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 pictures. Don't send us pictures. no pictures. If I see a picture attached in the next week, I'm probably just going to go ahead and delete it. Okay, um, <laughs> <laughs> just because. I don't trust you guys, okay? Um, or hit us up on at Mayhem Show on Twitter. What would you do on your end with Sunny? <laughs> on your end with Sunny, it could be um, sitting on your side and 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 reciting a racist Hulk Hogan promo. I don't know, you know. I mean, just something like what makes her break. So, okay, but but there's all this other stuff going on, you know. Hulk Hogan, Superfly, Jimmy Snuka, the and this is again a dirt dirt sheety thing but the word is you know the what is the status of say hulk hogan as part of the hall of fame can you remove people from the hall of fame at this point i don't know vince owns it he can do whatever the fuck he wants right so beg the question hypothetically you have let's say we do the wrestling mayhem show hall of fame obviously you guys are all in it and our Patreon Yay. supporters. I mean, I, I mean, it's a <laughs> foregone conclusion. We're just going to spread it out so we can make all that money over the Mayhem Manias over the year, okay? And and, and from Heinz Field at Mayhem Mania 35. Um, mm. But uh, when we're all dead and heads in jars and stuff, of course. But uh, do you think something <laughs> like we're this? We're all dead. The fuck is happening? What? <laughs> I what? <laughs> Apparently, we live in Futurama. Okay. I live in the math. I, I'm, I'm doing the math here, um, and it's been a really long day. Uh, so, 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 what do you think? You know, the, uh, the Jimmy Snuka situation. If, if, if he's, he's been charged, he hasn't been found guilty or anything. Um, and Hulk Hogan and and all these other things. And let's say if we had put Chris Benoit in the Hall of Fame and this and what happened happened. Um, do you remove them? Again, it's that question of do we erase this this person, especially somebody on the level of a Hulk Hogan, from our history at that point? And I'm just yes. talking about the Hall of Fame. You're saying yes. A, yes, you, absolutely. Because the Hall of Fame, it's not <clears> – <throat> yeah, you can go and you can have a celebration of a person's career and everything like that. But the Hall of Fame and Hall of Fames in general really are – less about celebrating someone's career and more about publicity and marketing. You know what I mean? So yeah. And, and WWE controls it and owns it and they can pull him right out and they can put him back in quietly later if they feel like I I have, I have, it's uh, not this, it's not this holy sacred pantheon, this sacred text that can't be altered or touched. 
I have I have a, a retort. Uh, the NFL still has OJ Simpson in their Hall of Fame. Yeah, but that's that's all. The NFL Hall of Fame is a bit more legitimate. And the NFL doesn't is they're not known for making good decisions. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, say in a case of like, I mean, WWE's already written Hogan out of of you know promo packages and like big time things. They don't mention Hogan at all. Like, St- like when Sting was listing legends last night on Raw, him conspicuously going past Hulk Hogan, um, like. That they've already done that, so what? Why wouldn't that extend to their Hall of Fame? Uh, as far as if I think it should happen or not, I, I mean, yeah, what Hulk Hogan said was terrible. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's awful and it's not something that should be praised or condoned at all. Completely understand that. At the same time, it's not murder. That's and I think true. murder holds a bit more of a, uh, a of a of good, a good point. It, in the, good point it, in the it's chat. More punishable. It's more punishable, I think, than a racist tirade. Good, 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 uh, good point in the chat. OJ technically uh, was found not guilty. <laughs> technically, technically, technically. So, and considering the things that people have been caught on film doing, and they have let slide. Um, so, mm. uh, Michael Vick, Pittsburgh Steelers. Half oh, of our, half of our team. Yeah, yeah, half <laughs> of the Steelers. But it, is, Steelers but it, it is, that, is that kind of game, though. Yeah. it is that kind of game because it's like. Mm. If they were to say, hey, Hogan should still be in the Hall of Fame for his racist tirade or whatever, or Snooker should still be in the Hall of Fame, people would also argue the recent stuff about how they said uh, – about how Triple H said they wouldn't probably ever induct China into the Hall of Fame because of her porn stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's like where's the line? Uh, but like I said, WWE is a – is I don't want to say facetious, but it's a it's a entity that can rewrite its own history. And it and it has done on numerous occasions. I've actually thought about this today. Just the and and, tell, and correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like I'm the only one on this panel or on the show that when I got into wrestling, I, and I started to learn through wrestling through the WWE and what they were telling me, it was from a revisionist kind of perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. by the time you started watching, they were big enough to already start rewriting their own history right mm-hmm. yeah right. and then i found i kind of discovered more like i i learned about the history of wrestling through means other than wwe like dvds or or you know media of, of, of theirs and i was like oh that's not how it happened you know mm-hmm. <laughs> that's not how the Monday night wars happened that's not how you listen know, listen every company has their donald duck nazi film and additionally to that, because I did not know this when you invited this fellow on, and this is a pure coincidence, because I received an email during this conversation, and we have to disclose this, and this trumps any conversation we've had, because it seems that our guest has a promo video for Bar Jutsu um, with Sonny in it. Um, oh, a little. So I had no, I, abs- I, like, I watched one of your videos and talked to you at PodCamp, and booked this interview, and this was not one of the videos. <laughs> <laughs> when we, uh, when, when you guys started talking about the Hall of Famers, I was like, "Oh, please, I hope they don't bring Tammy up." <laughs> and uh, and then, then you guys were like, oh, "Sorry, they went for the snooker angle." Whoops. I was like, "Great, whoopsies!" But uh, and then they were like, "Okay, let's talk about Sunny." And my head dropped. And I don't know if you heard the mic move <laughs> because my head hit the mic. But uh, Tammy's kind of uh, Tammy's a friend of mine. She's she's kind of like a Barjitsu <laughs> partner. <laughs> So, oh. <laughs> oh, this just got awkward. I'm sorry about yeah, that. Like, if you look at the back of the book, she wrote a thing for the back of the book, and uh, she wears our shirts. She's good people. So, so the question, the question we asked on Twitter, just, just don't pay attention to that. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> hey, you know what? Yeah, She's like a professional. She can handle it. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's gonna see this and she's gonna call me. <laughs> All right, let's state the thoughts and expressions of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Do not, um, 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 yes, don't represent Bars Jutsu and, and 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 everything. Um, we're just having fun here. We're just having fun, guys. So that's what this show's about. I do uh, like how you threw the the, the promo up there, though. <laughs> We'll give you we a plug. started talking about it, and then uh, the commercial went up. I'm like, oh, that's good. Yeah, we give you a plug. I mean, that's so whenever she calls, awesome. so when she calls me at 2 a.m., she could be like, "What the hell were you guys talking about?" But like, look, she they, he plugged the commercial. Look, listen, <laughs> I mean, and whatever's going on, whatever whatever this letter is that Riz has and everything. I mean, it's a business thing. China's important. That's fine. Mm-hmm. We're just kind of talking about. I hope I hope the context is this is the relationship between what they're doing and WWE. Hey, right? I just want hey. you to know that I'm not going to be one of those guys that's like. 
dude, that's a friend of mine. Don't talk like that. <laughs> I mean, she knows okay, what she's good. getting into. Yeah, she's yeah, a big exactly, girl. So. Exactly. And, and, I, and I've had a chance to work with her, too, uh, uh, on one of the Legends shows. She was super nice, awesome. Oh, look um, at him backtracking now. He's like, went, no, I didn't say anything <laughs> negative about her. She's the best. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I, it's it's worth conversation though. So it's like, all right, all right. Um, but anyways, wow, that went weird. <laughs> that went very interesting. Well, um, um, on that note, can I? Well, now that we've we've, we've popped your ad up there, uh, can we advertise something else? <laughs> uh, guys, check it out if you want to support indie wrestling and you want to check out that awesome match that Sonny was involved with with Jerry the King Waller actually. Uh, uh, ringside for for him. Uh, I was camera side for that. I was a, that was a really good moment for me. Uh, but um, or ringside camera. I'm sorry. Uh, Indie Wrestling US recently launched in the last few weeks. Uh, we're building it up. You can, that's where you can get the digital download. I believe the only place you can get the digital download of uh, the Legend of Virgil. And another person I have a interesting relationship with uh the legend virgil and his traveling merchandise table which is uh, he's been flying off to digital shelves over the last month i just did reports this month and I, I can't believe how many of you guys picked that up uh people have their virgil stories and if you bought one if you, you're looking to pick this up i want to hear your virgil stories uh and definitely tag joe dombrowski in that too since he's kind of the spearhead of this thing i understand some people are helping out virgil these days with his social media that's not him on twitter guys no it's not. um but uh it, 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 you know and and so it's been very interesting in the last couple of months when it comes to this project. But beyond that, we also have the latest uh, IWC Cage Fury 2015. RWA's Resurrection coming up. RWA's Aggression is going to be on that with the last match with our friends of the show, Jason Gorey and G Raver. Guys, don't do anything weird that you get in trouble for because I don't want to have this awkward conversation about you years later <laughs> uh, when you're in the RWA Hall of Fame. Uh, but, anyways, or whatever you end up in. Uh, but uh, no, go check out India Wrestling and US. Uh, Easy DVDs, digital downloads, so much local and, and, and wider wrestling. We got some classic ECW stuff with the Hardcore Legacy, uh, some little scene stuff with ECW guys, um, including new voiceovers done in the past few months with Shane Douglas uh, voicing over a lot of these matches from, from mostly the early 2000s. So and uh, so go check that out. Indie Rust. Oh, just new on here. Just popped up on my screen over here. But if you're into the super indie, so many names attached to that. Cole Cabana, CM Punk, Christopher Daniels, Chris Saban, P.D. Williams, um, some guy named El Generico, uh, etc. They're, they're making a big Logan Shuler who just debuted on TakeOver as the Drifter. Oh, not the, uh, not at TakeOver, but on NXT last week, but from Brooklyn still. Um, go check that out. Really a lot of great names. Episode. What's that? I'm really excited for this. He's one. really excited for this one. You're gonna buy it, even though I, I was there, I was there for most of those. You've seen most of the 14 super indies. But oh. We uh, got them packaged together, and you can get all 14 of them for. Uh, I think I have that up there for about uh, 59.99. If you want to check that out, get all the digital downloads. That's over. Jeez, what did I say? There's about 20 DVDs worth of stuff mm -hmm. because there's a lot of two discs. There's like one of the shows with two days and stuff. So go check out IndieWrestling.us. Sign up for the newsletter. You'll get news about uh, interviews that we're doing on Indie Mayhem Show, uh, new releases, and you'll be right on top of that stuff coming in. Support Indie Wrestling. You don't have to do it at IndieWrestling.us, but please consider us in your decision to support the little guys out there. And we'll uh, check a little bit of what's going on around SorgatronMedia.com in the last week, and we'll be right back with the big question. In a very fast manner. He he doesn't he didn't have an iPad, so he printed out the show notes. I, I have an iPad, he didn't have it with me at with work. Him. <laughs> I printed out the, the show notes, the rundown. I'm old school, like I was a television producer back in the day. <laughs> I love this. Print, I love print, this. It, print it. You gotta have your notes with you. And I, I love this. Out. We've had people from the stuff. newspaper on and they didn't bring paper things with them. Okay. <laughs> I have all I have all my look at all this. I got notes, I got rundowns, I got reference. I just love old school paper. Like, yeah, they only change colors when you ate the show. But there are different colored ones when you was Come at me. <laughs> Which there's so many uh, different anyways. Yoshis, and they were, and they and the other Yoshis were named Yoshi because the Yoshi Wait, is weren't the dinosaur. Yoshi, Yoshi's like the colors they mean different things. Like they can uh, jump Yoshi, higher. There's a jumpy yeah, Yoshi. Yeah, one can spit fire. So just as a wrestler, but then also I think as a fan, it's just once again I think the psychology has been lost. The psychology is it's just in a match, but it's how you promote your show and who's your champion and. What what's going on with your storylines and you know and all these things and why you know, don't let politics get involved but I just think psychology is the main thing that's lost on people like you, you need to have a champion you know if you have a champion have a champion that 
that looks like a champion. We should get Andrew Palace to talk about pepperoni pizza perfectly from Slice on Broadway to uh, support Pittsburgh Podcasting. Perfect. <laughs> Andrew Palace that wears purple. Uh, and he has a pirate's P on his private. Yeah. Yes, he does. Oh, you, oh, oh, this, for that poodle. There's a giant poodle behind me. Also with us from Poughkeepsie, New York, and he, uh, by way of Brooklyn this past weekend, he is the huggable Mad Mike. For- I, got, I got Bailey bands. I got your Bailey autographs. I got your NXT programs. I got your event shirts. I got everything you want from NXT TakeOver. So look. <laughs> and we'll That's be talking a Brooklyn accent. And we'll be talking some NXT, which is funny since you spent most of your time in the Bronx. Have you ever been that lonely guy standing in the corner of a bar, lacking the confidence to approach a beautiful woman or even defend yourself if needed? Well, this is the book for you. Bar Jitsu, the American art of bar fighting, filled with tips, techniques, and stories aimed to help you become the bar room stud that you've always wanted to be. Pick up your copy of Bar Jitsu, the American art of bar fighting, online or at a bookstore near you. <laughs> we are back. Check out the what's going on this week in Sorgatron Media. So much great stuff at SorgatronMedia.com all across the network. And check out our friends, too. Uh, check out guys like, uh, like, not that we, oh, we actually, we had some of the Epicast guys on one of the awesome casts. And let's go check them out. Great Pittsburgh podcast. Pittsburgh uh, podcast network. I said it right this time, guys. Um, and so many more. Uh, and Barjutsu, of course. Barjutsu.com. It is time, LB, for the time yes. where you deliver to us. Deliver unto yes. us. The biggest of big questions. What yes. is that big question this week? Um, I've been I've been thinking about wrestlers. I've been thinking about NXT wrestlers and TNA wrestlers, and and it, it, it got me thinking about uh, the early two thousands and the nineties, and, and how many how many wrestlers, how many names that were um, that were there briefly and then then disappeared into the ether, never to be heard of or seen of again, um, for various reasons. So. The question this week, the big question, is looking into the past. This does not concern the current roster. This is looking into the past. Which professional wrestler, in your opinion, was the biggest waste of potential? LB, I don't know. I know you're doing a Zoom thing on your camera. (laughs) Oh, no. I sat up. I forgot I was zoomed in. (laughs) <laughs> I was just, just for video. Sorry about that. It's just my eye. <laughs> I'm like, maybe he's doing a dramatic angle over there or something. Art. And then I realized yeah, he I just like went completely off. Like, I get, because I've been trying to do that periscope where I'm like half on the thing so you don't just see my face or, or, or something. But uh, that was that was majestic, sir. I forgot I was zooming <laughs> 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 but oh, anyways, okay, what what wrestler was a waste of space, basically? No, no. Which wrestler? I was sorry, I was distracted was, by your camera. <laughs> <laughs> which wrestler had a lot of potential, but it was wasted. That potential was never realized. Not counting anybody on any current roster. Oh, that's a good. And question. not counting anybody that I might have done a DVD for. Oh man, you can totally count people that you did DVDs <laughs> for. No problem. <laughs> No problem. Um, I, I, I always felt that um, uh, 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 I can't remember his name now. Shit. Come back to you. Who else? Who else yeah. has one? Uh, I, I think I know which one you're going with, Sorg. So I'm going to try to veer off the track. There I didn't say I was going one. to pick somebody that I've done a DVD for necessarily, but I'm just <laughs> well, saying. Well, I was going to pick actually. Uh, since since you kind of hinted at that, uh, Zach Gowan, mm-hmm. that man had so much potential and mm-hmm. and and actually a good storyline to go through. Right, it was just wasted. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't know if it was part writing, part his part part something to have to do with you know people feeling like he doesn't have it. Or what? It just seemed like he, because now you can see him in the indies, and he's phenomenal. Right, right. Like I, I 
I don't know what went wrong with him in WWE. Uh, with that being said, I'm, I'm sure uh, finding Zach Allen at <laughs> IndieWrestling.us will have all the answers for me. It has all the answers uh, and more, Riz. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, because it was for, I mean, he was 19, remember, when he was signed. Yeah. What 19 year old that gets signed and gets to work with your heroes in Hulk Hogan and. Uh, no. I'd love <laughs> to hear, I love to hear his thing about uh, Hulk Hogan these days. Stevie Richards, you mean? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what? Stevie Richards? And Stevie Richards. What? Oh, okay. Um, and, and, and Marty Piper and everything. <laughs> I mean, that I think that there is what went wrong to begin with. Uh, mm. uh, being a kid getting thrown into that. And then and his reaction, plus maybe the writing fizzled out and or, or whatever. Um, I think all that kind of goes together. So, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. And I, I kind of second that. And I was kind of debating on whether I go that direction with, with that kind of thing. So, mm. uh, LB, did you remember your person? Uh, yeah. Was it yeah. also Zach Gowan? It was Zach Gowan. No, it was, it was not also <laughs> That's Gowan. good. That's good. Um, it was, um... It's also not allowed to be sunny. Oh. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shit. Much appreciated. Um, <laughs> you know what? I am actually going to say, uh, if we're speaking purely of his WWE career, uh-huh. um, William Regal. Okay. Ooh. He's a man. I have all. I have always felt that that he's great, but he could do so much more. But they just never put their put their weight behind him. You know what I mean? I don't. Am I allowed to to jump in on that? Yeah, one? yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I absolutely. don't think. Uh, I mean, like, I, I I see where you're going with that one. Um, I, I always liked Regal, Regal uh, but I think that he was so good at it that he he didn't have to be you know, as big as he wanted to. He could do enough stuff backstage uh, and help the other guys uh, get over more. Um, I kind of, I think he, uh, I think he did a lot with, uh, you know, with his career. Um, I I don't know if, uh, are you saying like, um, you think maybe he should have been like, uh, you know, get tit- more title shots or uh, character wise, or are you talking about, you know, his actual career? As a as a wrestler, I, I just as just his wrestling career, his in ring career oh. specifically, I, I feel like he's he was squandered as a joke for a long period of time, and just he was a real man's man, exactly, yeah, <laughs> and uh, just remembering when he was the uh, the king of the ring, and he had that feud with CM Punk, and when he got to go like full villain, mm. you know what I mean? Well, let's that, get something straight. There was only one true king of the ring, the, the Macho King. That's <laughs> Sorry, I just want to get that out there right now. That's absolutely true. All the respects. <laughs> but uh, I, I feel like I see you. You saw something there in William Regal that I you never saw at any other time in his mm-hmm. uh, WWE career. Okay. But also, also he, had great he, matches with, uh, he had a great match with Chris Hero and CM Punk, right? Mm-hmm. And Daniel Bryan. Anyway, mm-hmm. go ahead. He's a man. Actually. I'm gonna go. <laughs> oh. you Thank you, LB. Eamon's answer. Tell me, Eamon. That's fine. Uh, no, I was gonna say, um, uh, kind of going to that same kind of ilk that uh, LB does. Uh, I immediately thought to my mind, uh, Lance Storm. Ooh, uh, mm-hmm. who's a guy? Very nice. I, I feel like, I, like he has his training school, but like other than that, like I feel like he can have more influence on, like wrestling, like WWE wise in particular. Um, uh, he's, I think he's a big example of a guy who got into the business 10 years too early. Like, I feel like if he was wrestling 10 years later, when a smaller guy could get over as like a top star, I feel like he had the potential to kind of do that. Um, he was kind of in an era where you had to be bigger. Like he was very talented, but you had to be bigger to kind of be considered a guy, um, for the most part. Uh, and I, I do think he has a, a wealth of knowledge and, and of, of wrestling and just uh, aspects of the business in general. He always seemed like a very good hand to have, um, uh, no matter what company he worked for. So I, I feel like he is definitely a bit of an untapped uh, uh, case. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of what you say about him, about uh, Lance Storm, can also be said for Jerry Lynn. Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, Jerry yeah, Lynn absolutely. is a guy that, whether we've seen him in person or we've seen him over the years, 
that we just adore. I think pretty much across the board here as far as our regular members. Um, and again, kind of a smaller guy. They didn't really have, like, we really had like a light heavyweight division that did nothing for WWE when he was there. Um, jeez, I think he had even worse luck in WCW, if I recall. Uh, obviously ECW was the thing where he came up and then he was kind of a novelty thing that they brought in, I think for mostly ECW ish rematches with RVD when they did TNA, if I recall. Um, but again, it was all, but every time you saw him, at least it was always kind of special, you know, outside of like weird WWE, early WCW stuff. Um, so, and another guy, not to plug the super indie package again, but has some great stuff on there too. Um, Later in his career, too, if I recall. So, no, I, I think definitely Jerry Lynn's one of those guys. So, there's a whole list. Like, uh, after after Lunchbox has said that, uh, asked me that, I'm I'm thinking in my head. I was like, let's see. There's Zach Gowan. Uh, I even thought of Maven for some reason. Uh, mm-hmm. Shelton Maven, Benjamin. Yeah. Shelton Benjamin now. Oh, jeez. Is amazing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Maybe Charlie Haas too, uh, but, yeah. but maybe those Paul guys Virgil. figured, Paul, Paul figured Virgil. those guys figured out uh, Brent Albright, friend of the show, mm-hmm. um, was was Gunner. tremendous. Brent Albright, yeah, Gunner, he was great. Mm-hmm. Um, no, Gunner, Gunner. Uh, James, what, yes. do, you have, do you have somebody that? Uh, yeah, I. You know what? It's running through my head because, like, I'm I'm an old school guy. You know, yeah. when I wrestled, I, you know, I I retired in 2009, but I started in '96, so I was you know, I was used to watching all that stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna go way back, and uh, I'm gonna pull Barry Horowitz out of my fucking wow. because nice. even though he was the king of jobbers, he was a fantastic worker. Didn't he? Uh, didn't he have some kind of run of some sort in WCW? He he started to, um, they they started to you know do something with him, but uh, I thought we were we were sticking with the WWF. W- no, that's fine. That's WWE fine. Things, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I really think, uh, I mean, you know, that was his thing. It was his gimmick. He was the guy that lost all the time. But, uh, I mean, if they would have pulled him aside, you know, curly-haired mullet and all, uh, and said, hey, you know what, we got a storyline for you, I, th- I think he would have been able mm-hmm. to pull it off. I really do. Wow. And so. I found this in my wallet. I forgot I bought this from mm-hmm. Dombrowski. Is it a condo? <laughs> no. <laughs> it, that close. is beautiful. It's a Barry Horowitz trading card. In your wallet? In my wall. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was not staged. <laughs> That's great. I, I did not know that. <laughs> These was... two have never met before, even no. though they were both at PodCamp. <laughs> even though they may have passed each other in the hall at PodCamp. I sensed a Horowitz vibe at the yes. PodCamp, and I couldn't yes. figure it out because I was like, nobody here would know who Barry Horowitz hey, was. Hey, Just patting myself on the back. <laughs> yeah, the there it is, buddy. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> nice, nice. From the chat room, uh, we had some Garza has a whole list. Uh, which I think we can agree with most of them. Uh, in WWE, low-key AJ Styles, Chris Daniels, Brent Albright, Cole Cabana, uh, Drew Galloway, Ter- Terry Taylor, Von Erichs, and he could keep going. P- Voice of Potential in TNA, Young Bucks 100%. And, Everybody. Uh, oh, yeah. Was the intention for the question to be WWE? Was, was, was the intention WWE only or just like on top? I thought it was uh, WWE only. I wasn't uh, sure. The, the only intention was non eater so nobody currently in WWE, TNA, wherever. Okay, no. okay. Because I, I had Mr. Anderson, but he's already... Uh, but, you could say, yes. but you could say he was wasted in WWE. A little bit. Nah, he, but now that I'm thinking about it, he wasn't really doing that either. No. They gave him a lot of chances. Right, but he, right. Just, but in w, you know, he was great in WWE. I loved him yeah, in WWE. Just, uh, yeah. Then he got... It all went yeah. poorly. Yeah, he's yeah. injury prone and all that stuff, but he would have done so much good in WWE at that time. So that's just me. If you want to answer the question, let us know. Hit us up hashtag WMS Big Question on the Twitters during this week. Please follow at Mayhem Show. Do it on the Twitters. Share it. Uh, let us know who do you think is the way, m- the biggest wasted potential over the years in WWE. And again, WCW. Anybody, anybody that got that chance in one of the feds. Uh, and and they didn't get a chance. Um, I don't think we count people that got wasted and became Brian Pillman. You know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. That like maybe they didn't do anything in WCW and they came over. Or Steve Austin, right, was completely wasted in WCW. Um, fantastic matches though. Holy crap! Cruiserweight division. Period. Um, 
But anyways, Hornswoggle. Uh, this week, yeah. I don't know which number it is, but uh, the giveaway for this week, if you participate, you'll have a chance to get the digital download of whatever super indie Jerry Law Jerry Lynn was a part of. Was ten. that nine? I'm, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say it was ten. I don't know if ten. I think Super Hentai won that one. I think it's like nine ish, if I recall. Maybe eleven ish. Uh, no, 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 whatever one Jerry Lynn is a part of, I'll put in the tweet. We'll we'll figure it out by the morning. Um, so let us know that, and uh, and you could win a chance at Super Indie mm -hmm, Jerry Lynn, mm. the Jerry Lynn show, the whole F and, the whole F and <laughs> Jerry it Lynn show. Post. Fix it in post. Super Indie, fix it in post. Um, LB, I know you got to go. Thank you very much for sticking Thank around you. with us and lying me. Bye, everybody. Thank you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Seven. What? Somebody say seven. I love you. Seven. <laughs> Bye. Bye. It's seven. Bye. 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 It's seven. <laughs> okay. Uh, and in the meantime, hey, if you want to support the show, uh, we told you so many ways, but this will actually put a shirt on your back. ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. So we got a lot of great stuff designed by Alex Cars over there. And while you're at it, don't just support the Mayhem show. Support a lot of other stuff. Basically, anybody you can freaking think of is on the site anymore. I just saw, uh, uh, actually, if you want to support the, the legacy of uh, Roddy Roddy Piper, I'm sure it goes to his estate or something, um, you can uh, actually pick There's up There's a picture Roddy of CM Piper Punk stuff. staring at There's you. There's CM Punk. There's clothesline apparel. They just they just also opened up. This is their brand new clothing line uh, with vintage t-shirts and everything, uh, higher-end stuff. They just did an MMA line. Uh, we actually have scheduled, we're going to have one of the guys from ProWrestlingTees.com in a few weeks on Indie Mayhem Show. So we're bringing this circle around because they're doing a lot of great stuff for indie wrestling, and I think it's, it's worth it to have a discussion. I'm still trying to track down that smart mark guy. Answer my email. Uh, but anyways, uh, but uh, no, no, go support us there. Also, Spreadshirt.com. We got a lot of other designs. We're experimenting. That's our experimental shop. We're going to have a little more fun with over there. We came up with like two shirt designs, actually, on Awesome Cast that we still have to put up there uh, last week during our interview with Frank Mergy with po Pittsburgh Podcast Network. So go support the shows. Pro Wrestling com slash WMS or I believe it's sorgatronmedia.spreadshirt.com all of them linked if you go over to wrestlingmamshow.com uh, support all those sites support uh, also our friends Power to the Smarks and the wrestlingrevolution.com all linked over there the 405 media that supports the show and so much more uh, we don't have any emails for this week uh, so yeah, <laughs> that's how prepared I am for this week's show. Um, but anyways, uh, but you know, hey, you know, we we, we have a lot going on. Um, we we talked about it in previous weeks about all these people coming and coming in. Um, and how do you guys feel? How do you guys feel about Sting right now? I uh, no. <laughs> no. 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 Because I, no, I feel like this is a very divisive no. topic. We talked about it on the raw wrap up a bit. Uh, mostly me and Mad, Mad Mike, and I, I think Bobby was a part of it the one week as well. It seemed like it was out of left field. It seems like kind of a, an attention grab. Now it turned into this double match situation, which I'm glad. Which is a great. We stole another storyline from Ring of Honor. Um, okay. Sure. Sorry, Jay Lethal. Uh, but it's really obvious at this point, isn't it? Uh, that they're defending both belts uh, the way they are. Riz, you seem to have a problem with this. I, I do because it, it for the past few times this has happened, we, we, we were going away from, hey, we're giving John Cena, you're giving John Cena a title, but that's not helping out the younger talent to Oh my God! This is Sting, and he's facing Seth Rollins for the WWE title. Wait, wait, wait! Are we really still worried about Seth Rollins getting the push when he's held onto a belt since WrestleMania? Yes. Well, I, to a degree. Not us, a, but, not, right, wait, I, not, not in the sense that Riz said. Uh, I do find it really concerning that the main storylines for the last two, like this this feud and the John Cena SummerSlam feud, is all about. Well, Triple H is great, and you're not. Well, it is compare. I, I get where they're going with that. That it's comparing that, but to me, this is like the Brock Lesnar situation or the the Rock situation from a few years ago. You're having a title match with a guy who's let's face it, a part time guy and a talent. Like 
in one of your full time talents that is actually pretty damn good in the ring. And we don't we Sting was okay against you know Triple H. He, who knows what he's going to do against Seth Rollins? I'm not I'm not predicting that he's going to suck or anything like that. But there are so many other like other different wrestlers in there that deserve that title shot. Not, 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 not dissing on Sting. Sting is one of the toughest, like one of the best wrestlers or one of the best characters in professional oh, wrestling. I'm history. sorry. I didn't mean to laugh at him and cut that off, but uh, when he started saying one of the best wrestlers, I kind of started squinting, and then he went, well, I meant one of the best characters, and I was like, oh, well, that's, that sounds a little yeah, better. Yeah, sorry. Like, I, I was trying to... I, I, well, I was, he, he was, he's the most, he's, he's an icon. He's the right. icon Sting. He was and an he, amazing wrestler in the early 90s. Yeah, when he was wearing vibrant face paint mm-hmm. and not facing up against, you know, drugged out wrestlers in TNA and looking mm-hmm. like a slob. Uh, he, but, yeah, when he wasn't uh, uh, walking around in t-shirts and, and, and blatantly ripping off oh, he's movies that he's watched. T-shirt. Where people, what, what, what people in, fa- in you know, with fa- face paint characters like the Crow and the Joker, it just like, <clears throat> I, you, we, that's what throws me is this these legendary and all this stuff and and yes, and I understand I can't come out in the in the pink vibrant holy crap thing from the nineties that doesn't oh, make I want, sense. I want eighty Sting with RoboCop or I think you kind of do. If we're, if, we're getting, do. if we're getting Sting at Night of Champions, that's the Sting I want. I don't want crow sting. I want blonde hair, surfboard, the man called sting. I absolutely agree with that. <laughs> I do. I, you know what? I marked out the sting. Uh, when he, when he came out, I was like, Oh, the crow, that's a, that's a good movie. I like that. But mm-hmm. I was like, no, I want the blonde haired, you know, the, the blade runner sting. You know, I, I want, <laughs> I want the sting that I, I watched, you know, uh, Clash of the Champions, and I, I stayed up whenever it was on uh, whatever channel that was, TBS. Uh, mm-hmm. And that that excited me. You know, he he got on the mic, he worked the mic, and and uh, you know he could actually uh, carry a match psychologically. But now it's just it's oh Jeez, what him, what movie's popular him, right now? Him and Steamboat, you know. Oh my God! I mean, yes, geez. I mean him and Steamboat, him, him and Flair, Vader. him and Vader. I mean, oh, they're 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 timeless. They're classics. Yeah. Um. You know, and and they're just trying to get that again. Mm-hmm. And and the worst part is, like I said, I, I really don't watch it anymore. Um. But uh, is he allowed to bring his walker into the ring during the matches? <laughs> and I don't think he's in that bad of shape per se. But and and I, I, and it's not like they really wrestled a five star classic. There was too much stuff going on. I, I said recently this the Sting Triple H match verged on it was heading toward down the road of the Bret Hart Vince McMahon match from from a couple years ago now Bret you need to cover up he can't wrestle anymore right but he has a reason he's had a couple strokes Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean you can't expect him to at that point right but Sting I I think the issue going into this and why I'm I'm not fully into this the whole Sting Seth Rollins thing doesn't really have to do with Sting's physical performance right. or even his look. Right. I think it comes from the fact that it, it comes from the concern that I had all the way back at WrestleMania, which is that Triple H beat Sting. Mm-hmm. Sting is zero and one in WWE competition. Yeah. And he beat and Triple H beat Sting with like tons of interference, like hitting him with a sledgehammer, like all this stuff. And then Sting's back getting a title shot, being like, and with the moral of the story being. I want to show you that you're not half the man Triple H is. Yeah. What? Yeah. Like, and he was worried. Does that make any sense? And how does that make Sting look good or a threat or? And he was worried about how he was going to look coming in earlier. I mean, I mean, it's not as bad as what they did with Goldberg and Scott Steiner back in the day. But oh, man, but this is too bad though. Man, like objectively, it's very bad. There's no reason Sting should have lost that match. Like how many people? I don't feel like I don't feel like you have to be a wrestling mark to kind of look at that 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 speech he gave on Monday night and just be like, wait a minute. The, and I, like like you said, I mean, there's no reason for him to lose to lose that match at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. There's no reason to have this match at Night of the Champions. And yeah. this is gonna sound shitty, and I'm sorry for the people I'm about to offend. There should be no Undertaker versus Sting. I am sorry. I don't think that's that something. Like people, 
That's and the I would love to say story. people. Sorry. Go ahead, Sorry, man. you go ahead, Miss. You go ahead. All I was going to say is I, I hope the people that are really outraged at Nikki Bella saying that wins and losses don't matter are equally as outraged at Sting getting a title yes. shot when he's 0-1. <laughs> Thank you. Listen, he has a lot of legendary status to work off before before he doesn't get any more title shots. Okay? I, just, I don't I mean, understand. No. I'm sorry, not to cut you off. It's all right, it's fine. I don't understand when when uh, when did title uh, when did championships uh, stop meaning anything? Oh, exactly. I mean, it, it's it's. I mean, there's guys 90, now. Ninety eight. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but there's guys now. I mean, they bust their ass in the ring. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. they really work it, and they they even old school. They you may see them turn to the crowd and get the crowd into it. You know, interact with the crowd a little bit during the match, mm -hmm. but. Uh, you know, I, I remember that's probably the last time I watched whenever uh, a title belt meant something, especially the, mm -hmm. the IC belt meant something. Uh, now it just seems like, oh, he has really nice hair. Let's give him a title shot next week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also, also like the fact that with this double title match with for Rollins, why are we stacking the deck against Rollins going into the pay-per-view? Mm, I, like, why why I tell you why. I tell you why, Eamon. If you listened to the wrap-up wrap last night, you would have this, the answer to this question. <laughs> Is why why you need to listen to the product, uh, as if I should talk. Um, <laughs> listen, it's the Jericho theory. This is going to be the thing mm -hmm. where Seth Rollins, mark my words, because I was right about John Stewart, sort of. Um, Seth Rollins is going to walk out of Night of Champions, having beat one way or another. Jericho didn't win clean either. Remember. Uh, mm -hmm. he's going to walk out and you're going to hear for how long, how he beat John Cena and sting two legends in the same night. Don't walk into saying, well, there's another thing. It's foregone conclusion. Oh, he's going to get beat by one of these or both of these or whatever. But how great would it be if he's the guy that gets to say that? Think about the case. Great. Think about the case and how they are stacking the odds against him. Okay. Did you really think Jericho was going to beat a, 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 a four-way spread that was at the time Kurt Angle, who was hot as hell and I think already had a belt, uh, The Rock and Stone Cold, who are the hottest things ever, not to mention at the time, and that put him over and, and that cemented him to at least a semi-main spot, right? That, that's fair, but I think that's also... I, 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 I think you are very... Uh, and do the belief that John Cena is going to lose to Seth Rollins again? I believe. How? Not to, not what to other that, talk oh, show? John Cena always wins, guy. But I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be that guy. But John Cena is getting his win back. John, hey, John you know Cena's what? Back. What is? Because honestly, what is Seth going to do with the U.S. title? Walk the, around and the hell he wants. defend it twice for a couple of pay per views, and it'll be interesting to see how he gets. And you get to you get to story tell. You get to have creative ways for him to get out of it. You know, I mean, he's not going to win clean everything, right? Well, the, but the, the, oh, and I'm and yeah. I'm not expecting him to. Mm -hmm. But I but I feel like there's this recurring storyline where Seth, whether clean or otherwise. You know, is being the deck is being stacked against him. Oh, he's got to defend in a fatal four way. Oh, he's got to defend against Dean Ambrose in a ladder match, and he doesn't want to. Oh, he's got to defend against Brock Lesnar. Oh, he's going to face John Cena, and John Cena always wins. Uh, and now but this. He, like, here's the thing, though. He's he's overcome the odds. Yeah, but everyone immediately tells him he's still not good enough. That's just shitty storylines. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's what I mean. Like. He accomplishes the goals. That, no matter the means, he accomplishes the goals, and then everyone's like, well, you're not good enough. Yeah, seriously. The, the way John Cena explains it is, you beat me, but you're still a piece of shit. That's yeah. it. That's his whole thing. But And then I, that's one thing I don't get. But uh, going back, I, 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 we had an awesome match between uh, Kevin Owens and... And Cesaro, and I just sat there going, "Why is this happening?" <laughs> That's not the response like, I expect. No, no, no. I mean, it was an amazing match, it be. but it's why is this happening? What are they? What are they beating each other up for? Right. For the fifth right. 
time in probably a month. Well, this, and this is something I, I kind of illustrated last night too, because I feel like we're having these matches and rematches just because. Like, I feel like there's there has to be a writing issue where we can't intermingle people, and and I don't know why we're afraid to bring people not involved in a main storyline for the next pay per view onto Raw. Like, why isn't yeah. why aren't these guys beating up on Zack Ryder? You know, why aren't there jobbers? Because that's the, the, instead of instead of uh, we're going to have you wrestle here and then you're going to wrestle a few times, maybe in big tag matches or three ways or something like mm-hmm. that. And then you're going to wrestle again. It's going to be really important. The next pay-per-view. Why? Why? They've already, they, they already did the New Day versus the Dudleys last night. But mm-hmm. the thing is, like they we're still the match. And it, granted, it's not us, but 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 we're still watching and they're still getting their ratings and they're dipping and whatever, but they're still making money at it. It works. It's a proven formula. But it's going to wane to go, after go a with, while. Go against what Eamon said. Um, they did that match, but they also did something that they never, they rarely never do. They made you, like, they, they, they actually told a somewhat viable story. Notice that that one table did not break the entire night. No, the that's entire, yeah, because that that's the one thing they wanted you to know. It's, hey, they beat us, but we're still the champs, and none of us was put, was put through a table. Mm-hmm. And that's what they wanted to drive into your skull. And also, actually, and even that, booty. And that was <laughs> booty. well done. Booty. New Day is the <laughs> best thing on Raw right now. Period. <laughs> just, just this is the best thing. It on. is the thing I look forward to every week without Paul Heyman around. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, well, on that note, let's uh, take a look. What did you guys learn from wrestling this week? Uh, let's go around the horn, and I know we got a few comments on Facebook as well. Eamon, what did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that booty is an adjective. <laughs> and also a verb. Just look, just, just look at uh, Big E's Twitter account. It's yeah, now amazing. He's using, now he's just using booty to describe things. <laughs> like, can you uh, use Like booty? saying that that sandwich is booty. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Big E Langston. Uh, Riz, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Shit. Um... I learned <sighs> shit. Come back to me, sword. We didn't prep you for this question, but James, what did you learn from wrestling <laughs> this week? I learned that John Cena has not retired yet. <laughs> nope, never will. Well, there you go. Right, uh, and uh, Riz, we're back to you. Uh, well, I learned that with all this trouble going on, with legends getting in trouble, and and other things of that nature. One name that's looking really good going into the Hall of Fame, the Great Kali. <laughs> not China? He, no, and, and, not China? No? Oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> you don't speak about China. Because you can Google her name and things will pop up. Um, <laughs> yeah, they will. <laughs> boing. Boing. Uh, <laughs> Because wow, let's face it, the great Kali, we we know he killed a guy by accident. Because <laughs> <laughs> he messed up. He did at least mess up. He was also a cop, wasn't he? He was a was. cop. Oh my god! This is this is so your much. idol. This is your idol. He's killed a man and he's been shot in the chest and and dances mm-hmm. and kiss cams. Yeah, my idol. <laughs> right there right 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 there we right are there. Okay, right good. there right in the heart right in the heart oh jeez sorg what um i what learned learn? please i learned that that wwe listens to petitions that don't necessarily meet their goals um matt carlin yeah. started a petition last week strip nikki which i came around to because it was like actually and, and, and even when I tweeted it, because I like I wanted to get it up there, and we got to like something like eighty people signed up for it, and then and then it turned around and they had the match uh, so, uh, lined up for Night of Legends or Night of it's starting yeah, Night, of Night of Superstars you do this every year, every year. You do I that. was good about it for like a week, okay, um, but uh, but no, it, it was we read the Jack Tunney rule book 
and a champion mm-hmm. needs to defend every 30 days. And 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 and, I, and I'm I'm glad that, that that happened. And there's a victory post over there if you go to change.org and look up hashtag strip Nikki. By the way, the comments when I posted that to some of the Google Plus groups for wrestling were hilarious uh, and I, sometimes I, lewd. And I'll say, I'll say this not to not to step over uh, Matt Carlin's and his joyous victory. Um, here's the thing about uh, one. They were going to have the match at Night of Champions anyway. You don't know that. Guys. You don't know that. All the champions Two. were supposed to be defended that night. Two, uh, she's already going to pass the AJ Lee's title reign uh, before the pay-per-view. So, you know. Uh, three, you didn't really get the victory because they aren't stripping Nikki. They're just mm-hmm. putting her in a title match. Listen, listen. And, and okay. Four, if I, if I want to – if I can. Um, yeah. Where was this – Anger with Brock Lesnar. Oh, we were angry. Also, as, we were angry. also, as Riz pointed out on the Facebook group, where was this anger when Dean Ambrose held the U.S. title for like a year without yes. defending it? I just, I just did that to because uh, I know somebody else and well, would have probably answered that. <clears throat> Matt says, and I quote on his victory speech, uh, my friends and fellow professional wrestling friends, fans, our long, hard journey is nearly complete. As clearly stated since the beginning, this picture is not just about stripping Nikki Bella, though it made for a memorable hashtag strip Nikki hashtag. I duplicated that. Uh, it's hashtag. also about WWE forcing uh, Nikki to defend her Divas Championship, a title she hasn't defended since July 12th. This morning we can celebrate. Victory will soon be ours. WWE announced Nikki Bella is scheduled for her to defend her Divas Championship against Charlotte at Night of Champions September 20th. While I'm sure many of you are disappointed with the enduring more than two month wait for Nikki's next events, it will happen. I must also point out that Nikki is in line to become the longest reigning Divas champion in WWE history five days before her scheduled title defense at Night of Champions. I want to thank you for all of your support and worthy cause. <laughs> this position may not have ended with Nikki Bella stripped of the Divas championship, but a match against Charlotte looks like the next best thing. So there you go. And, and by the way, I, for some reason, I looked this up. Uh, the Davies Boy Smith Hall of Fame induction uh, petition oh. has almost eight thousand subscribers. Is eight thousand su- supporters? And this so you petition have a long way to go, Matt. And well, we were only looking for a hundred people. So um, this petition more successful than David Boy Smith in the Hall of Fame. There you go. There you go. Uh, from the Facebook, what did you? Th- what did these pe- fine people learn uh, on the Wrestling Ma'am Show Facebook group? where a lot of the conversation's happening throughout the week. You guys keep it busy. Uh, Matt Carlin's learned that there are fans out there who are perfectly content with a champion who doesn't defend his or her title every 30 days. Yeah, he got a lot of responses. So, uh, Antonio Garza, unless you're, unless you're at a J- January Tokyo Dome show, there is no better place to be than sitting at a PWG show. No promotion can top a bull, uh, Battle of Los Angeles uh, weekend. He, he and uh, we should be talking about that on Indie Mayhem show later tonight. If you're joining us live, uh, Alex Carr is out there in California. Speaking of, learn that you can make an online petition for pretty much anything. I may or may not make a Make Wrestling Real Again petition by the day's end. Okay, I will probably support that. Uh, Kiko, Keiko, thank you, Keiko. The Xavier Woods hair is fantastically luscious. I was bothered by his hair. Why? Like, I don't know, fundamentally or emotionally. I can't figure out why. I'll get back to you on that. Um, Daniel says that if you feel threatened about the younger, more talented crowd taking your title, run to John Cena. Okay. Uh, Jennifer his Carlin's. name is John Cena. <laughs> Jen Carlin said that you can insert the power of positivity into everyday life. Hashtag POP. Somebody sending me a picture. Hold it down. We won't show that on air. Uh, over on the Facebook page, Gabriel learned that the Total Divas, uh, from Total Divas, that Eva Marie uh, being trained by Kendrick could save her wrestling career. I don't know. I, I, have you been impressed by her on, on NXT so far? Not particularly. Not really, right? It's just, I mean, she's a little better, but she's nothing, not mind blowing by any, any, any stretch. Where's Naomi? Where's her uh, Brian Kendrick training at? But, anyways, why isn't she jobbing instead of like the uh, the third team not involved in the title picture? So, I digress. <laughs> Guys, it's been fun. It's been crazy. It's Has been it? unpredictable. As in, I didn't even know what we were going to talk about tonight. But uh, we haven't had one of those in a while. <laughs> so uh, it's been fun. Thank you so much, James Matthew. Barjutsu.com. 
I don't even know who all your friends are. You sent me pictures of so many people of Barjusu. Uh, we'll get into this on the Indie Mayhem show. I didn't know well, how. Well, we know one. Well, we know we know one now. <laughs> you know we're, one. We're very aware of that one. Hi, Sonny. Hi. <laughs> we we love you. We love you, Sonny. <laughs> I'm sure you can have her on here. I, I'm, I'm sure we could. I'm, I'm sure we could. We haven't asked. I don't know. Um, I'm still kind of curious what these people say on the tweeters uh, from my challenge earlier. In good fun. In good fun. It's always in good fun here. Never malicious. Except for... There was somebody we were malicious about. Oh, well. Um, but go <laughs> check it. Barjusu.com. Uh, who's not here? Uh, for it, Since he's gone, uh, LB is PanelRiot.com. He does comic book stuff over there. You mm-hmm. should check it out. And he has a Patreon as well to support Maybe that. Maybe one day you'll see me on there. Maybe Riz. He's at Riz Plays Games at InsertCoinTB, InsertCoinBegin.com. Video game things. That's what he mm-hmm. does. And also the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, Amen. Electric hey. Amen. Hi, Amen. <laughs> Go check yeah, out Amen 2, wrestling. please. And I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitter. SorgatronMedia.com is where you can find wrestling and non-wrestling things. Uh, so much going on. And, uh, and, and I do video things, too, if you happen to to need those kinds of services. Um, so go check out SorgatronMedia.com. Sign up for the newsletters for wrestling and non-wrestling related uh, happenings around around what we're doing here. And uh, go check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe, comment, uh, share. Check out the other shows, please. Check out our social medias. Big thanks to Basic Sickness at BasicSickness.com for the intro and outro music thank you for supporting the show support him back there's some free music and he's got a new album coming out soon music videos so much more thank you to our patreon uh uh, uh, patrons patreon patrons uh for supporting the show keeping the lights on down here sometimes literally uh and uh so much more uh we'll see you guys next time thanks to our chat room live at wrestlingmayhemshow.com 9 p.m eastern time thereabouts we'll see you guys next time mayhem show out This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.